Day 12. Time, approximately 10.30 a.m. Location. Broccoli Fields. Big 52. South Branch. Broccoli. The capital of... <laughs> well, you guessed it. All around the town rose fortified farms, surrounded by green and yellow fields. The crop didn't seem healthy nor yummy, but growing anything in this tainted and sunless land seemed a great success already. A couple of figures in the distance were working the fields, but they didn't pay any attention to the yellow filly moving from the north along the Big 52. Unlike the farmers, a solitary sprite bot patrolling the road immediately noticed the yellow bolt and stopped broadcasting its usual patriotic songs, instead turning towards the incoming filly. Hi, puppy smiles. Have you got a mo- The filly zoomed past Watcher. Meant? Ah, foals. Hey! Wait, you little lady! Wait! Sprite Bot chased Puppy, trying to catch her attention. Sorry, Questioner. I'm in a hurry. I want to get to Broccoli before my mom goes away again. The filly kept zooming while she replied at the robot summons. Please, at least tell me what happened at Ivory Tower. I can't follow you into town. Eh, nothing special. Some stars fell from the sky and the town went boom. It was fun and a little scary, but mom wasn't there, so it's all right. Yeah, but what made those stars fall? insisted the robot. Yeah, I don't know. The filly stopped abruptly, suddenly realizing something. Oh no, I forgot it. Stupid puppy, stupid, stupid. The fool began hitting herself in the helmet with a hoof. What now? What did you forget? From the robot's voice, it was easy to tell he was both worried and stumped. Was it important? Puppy jumped down off the scooter and trot towards the rock, hitting it with her head and continuing her mantra. Stupid! Bonk! Stupid! Bonk! Stupid! Bonk! Stop that! You'll break your helmet, puppy! Now please calm down and tell me what's wrong. Maybe I could help you or find somebody that can help? The sprite bot floated next to the filly in yellow, bumping gently against her shoulder. Come on! You're a big pony! I'm sure it's nothing that can't be solved. No! Bonk. You don't understand! Bonk. It's too late now! Bonk. Stupid! Bonk. Stupid! Bonk. Ah, come on, puppy. You remind me of... The robot's voice stopped for a moment, as if he caught himself thinking about things he didn't want to recall. Ah, I'm sure we can fix it. I'm your friend. Please don't cry, little one, and tell me what's wrong. We'll find a solution, okay? And just... Don't... Do like that? Please? The robot's voice was filled with pain and sadness. Puppy must have caught the change in Washer's voice, because she stopped headbutting the rock, sat down, and sighed. I... I forgot an important thing, Mr. Watcher. But I had to do it when I was still in Ivory Tower. Now that the stars are falling and the place is gone, I can't do it anymore. I'm a silly pony. Oh, I understand. You needed to be there for it? I'm sorry, puppy. Really. The robot floated beside her while asking, By the way, what was it you had to do? I... I had to ask a, stalling, a falling star to find my mom. There were so many of them. They would know where mom is for sure. When you see a falling star and you make a wish, it comes true for sure. But I forgot. Now I have to find Mom by myself again. It's not fair. You forgot to wish upon a star? All this scene about a wish? I can't believe it. The robot paused, noticing the crushed spirit of the filly and rapidly changed tack. That's bad. But it's not terrible. Don't worry. There was a long, embarrassed pause. Puppy, I have a friend that sometimes acts exactly as you're doing right now. She was a very smart pony, but she lost herself in a glass of water because it was the most incredible details. Sometimes, it was really important. Some other times, it wasn't. But her way of panicking and acting impulsively worsened things a lot. Panicking's not good for clever young fillies. And you are a clever young filly, right? Puppy sighed and nodded, looking down. Perfect. This is what I wanted to hear. 
Since you're a smart pony, I'm sure you don't even need the help from a star to find your mom. I mean, look at you. You already arrived here with all those useless stars. You can go wherever you want with your determination and friends. The filly tilted her head a little, looking at the sprite bot with a hopeful expression. Really? Yeah, puppy, really. I think that if there's a pony that could really find your mother, it's not a magic living pony on a star or some sort of fairy pony with butterfly wings. That pony is you, puppy. So, why don't you stop moping around and show me some of your enthusiasm? Slowly, the frown on puppy's muzzle turned to a faint smile and kept growing until Watcher's words hit her a little head and she understood them. Yeah! I'm Space Captain Andromeda. I'm the best pony ever. I'll find Mom for sure. Who needs a stupid star anyway? Thank you, Mr. Questioner. The filly hugged the sprite bot, giggling. I'm sure Mom will be in Broccoli, or in the town after Broccoli at worst. I'm almost there. Yay! The voice chuckled. That's the spirit puppy. Now go and get him. Oh, and it's Watcher. My name is Watcher. Sure, Mr. Questioner. Not Questioner. Watcher, insisted the sprite bot. Puppy sighed, trying to be patient. Really, I don't see you watching a lot, but you sure are making a lot of questions. So if you really want a name like that, it's Questioner. No more complaints. But that's not my name. Puppy shrugged. Now it is. Live with it. Really, no other voice protested when I gave them names. Uh, I give up. Do what you want, stubborn little pony. I have to go. Just try and stay out of trouble, okay? I always stay out of trouble. I'm a good filly. Watcher chuckled one last time before the voice was replaced with the usual patriotic music, and the sprite bot floated away. Puppy watched as the robot disappeared behind a hilltop and sighed. I can't see why he doesn't like the name I have gave him. I mean, it's so much better than the one he had before. Day 12. Time, approximately 11.30 a.m. Location, Broccoli, Big 52, South Branch. The town of Broccoli was protected by a group of local guards and a couple of squads from the hired hooves. Not a real army, since no pony was supposed to threaten the town. From the night before, the guards were now running double shifts, keeping their eyes pointed towards the south. From what little news Lonesome Pony gave, the wild herd was on the warpath. And this time, they had sticks. So, it was vital that every pony who could use a weapon was ready to get up, grab his rifle, and defend the wall. The mercenaries wore black gas masks and heavy armor. Nothing special if compared to the Steel Ranger's armor, but for the wasteland, they were still equipped top-notch. All the hired hooves sported anti-material rifles or assault rifles, while the Broccoli Militia was little more lightly armored and way less armed. A pair of militia ponies patrolling the northern field noticed Puppy approaching along the road. One had already taken aim at the foal when she suddenly came to a halt and sat down, holding one hoof against the side of her helmet, as if listening to something. The pair looked at one another in confusion. Attention. Incoming request for opening a communication bridge with the structure of Solaris Stable. Checking authorization. ID is valid. Opening communication. Solus's voice replaced that of the suits. All these ID checks are annoying. They could prove to be a problem in case of emergency. I suggest that you lower your security measures. Puppy sat down in the middle of the road, smiling. Oh, it's you, Blue Voice. How are you? The filly waved a hoof at the approaching guards, who simply waved back and exchanged another confused glare. The plan is not going as predicted, D-18, which is why I'm calling you. I have some questions for you. Solaris didn't even bother to say hello, but Puppy knew he was just a bit shy, so the filly let that thing slip. Questions? Guessing game? Yay! Ask me! I'm world champion of guessing games! The filly clopped her hooves in joy. She loved to play. One of the two guards levitated his rifle, readying the shot, but the other stopped him with a hoof. 
Wait. I think this is that ghost from the radio. I don't think we're supposed to shoot her. Besides, I'm curious. Solus went on. I have contacted the facilities at Solaris Tunnel 1 and 2, but in 2 I found some sort of an artificial intelligence controlling the place. Since you once said something about being a friend with another AI, I wanted to know if you knew something about this one. Its designation code is P7. Oh, Miss Voice? Yeah, she's my very best voice friend. She's funny and friendly, and she's the best funny bot ever. Solus paused for a moment. I take that as a yes. That program was not supposed to be installed in a military base. Do you know why there is a P7 pony machine interfering, uh, operating in Solaris Tunnel 2? Sure. She was lonely at Sol Cube City, so I helped her move house. Now she has a lot of new friends. Ah, uh, do you want to be her friend too? The unicorn guard sighed, but his friend poked him with a hoof. See? She's been in Salt Cube and at the tunnel. She must be the ghost. Wasn't she looking for her mother or something? The unicorn shrugged. I don't care. Look, if she is the pony you're talking about, we should simply ignore her and keep her eyes open for a real threat. The two ponies trotted away, taking the path that headed to the nearest farm. In the meantime, Solus and Puppy continued their talk over the radio. Actually, I wanted it to grant me access to the weapon storage, but that program cut out my administration rights and banned me from the local net. So, uh, you wanted to be her friend, but she didn't want? No, I need access to the weapon storage. Are you even listening to what I said? Puppy giggled. Silly voice. You don't need to be shy. She's super friendly. I'm sure she wants to be your friend. And you two can be best friends forever. Because you are blue and she's pink. And every pony knows that pink is the color of fillies and blue is the color of folks. And... Puppy stopped, gasping. What now? Tulsa's voice had grown annoyed. Its usual talk, with its crazy anomaly, was an impossible feat. I know. You've fallen in love with her. Don't worry. I'm fixing that. I'm a super expert on love. What? No. That is not what I meant at all. Talking with you is a complete waste of time. I'll find another way to get those weapons. Get lost. Solus cut off the communication. Ah, he's so shy. Puppy finally turned towards the two guards. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my mu- Hey, where are they gone? The guards had disappeared, leaving the foal on her own. Day 12. Time approximately noon. Location. Broccoli. Big 52. South Branch. Puppy reached the walls of Broccoli, still confused about being left alone like that. This had never happened to her before. Well, except that one time in Sun City. But that was different. Ponies there were weird. Oh well. It didn't matter. There were plenty of pretty ponies here, so it was going to be easy to find some help. The fool found herself in front of a closed gate and sat down, looking up at the wall's crest. A pony with a gas mask was looking back at her. Hi there. Can I get inside, puppy, please? I'm looking for my mom. Ah, uh, if I can't get in, can you tell her to come out? The masked pony ignored the filly and trotted away, patrolling the wall. Hey, I'm talking to you, funny muzzle. Hey, ah. Nothing. These stupid ponies had to be deaf and blind. Now what? Puppy tried banging on the door, but patience wasn't exactly her virtue, so she decided to trot around the wall to see if there was another way in. The wall was composed of a patchwork of metal carcasses, welded together to ensure that there were no gaps between them. Suddenly, Puppy heard the sound of a gunshot coming from the south, quickly followed by the shouts of guards as they rushed around the wall towards the noise. None of them paid attention to the foal outside. When the filly reached the other side of town, she noticed there were way more ponies on the walls. A lot of them were wearing those black masks, and some of them had helmets and crappy rifles. Sometimes a pony looked down at her, but when she tried to talk to them, they simply turned away and resumed looking out into the distance, just like their friends were doing. This was beginning to frustrate the foal. Ah, 
Mr. Voice, isn't there any secret passage to get inside? Analyzing. Connecting to equestrian cartography on Spark. Warning. Broccoli not found in database. Switching to auto map mode. The town has two accessible points. One from the north, one from the south. Both accesses in this moment are inaccessible. Puppy frowned. So we're closed outside? Affirmative. A rapid analysis of the external walls does not reveal the presence of any other entrances. Advised solution. Asked to be let in and waiting for a positive answer. Puppy frowned. What? Knock on the door and wait. The fool smiled enthusiastically, finally understanding what the interface meant. Oh, okie dokie. I can do that. I'm good at asking for things. The filly trot merrily towards the southern door, only to be interrupted again by the suit. Attention. Incoming request for opening up a communication bridge with the structure Solaris II. Checking Authora. The suit's voice was muted and replaced with P7's. Ah, shut up, you grumpy routine. Hi, puppy. How are you doing? I hope you're fine, because it's been a while since our last chat, and I was really wondering and worried that you forgot about me. So, I was thinking I should call you and make sure you're alright. Uh, are you alright? Puppy jumped on her hooves in excitement. Miss Voice, I almost forgot to call you. I have a lot of things to tell you. Oh, wait, but I have some super duper extra news for you. Really? Wow, I can't wait to hear it. But before, I wanted to ask you why you activated the Pony Meaties net. I mean, you said you didn't want the ponies to get hurt, and then... You have a cult friend! And then you have a cult friend. Wait. I have a what? Why, I'm the last of those... things... to find out these things. Hope you wanted nicely. Yep, he's super shy, but he says you were a little nasty with him. There was a short pause. While the AI tried to elaborate the new information. But I don't have a cult friend. I don't even know anything about love. The fool frowned. You don't know anything about love? How is that possible? Well, you see, it seemed like love trashed the P5 project. Since the AI decided that love was more important than, let's see, survival of the planet, so she mixed up her priorities a bit and, well, it's a sad story. You don't really want me to tell it. But now I have a cold friend, so that's all different. What can I do? I don't even know him. Puppy giggled. Silly voice. He knows you. And don't worry, I'm the best love expert ever. What? Really? I've always wanted to know about love. Can you teach me? The filly held up a hoof. Yeah. Dr. Pup Love will teach you, and you'll be the best ever at love. Yay! Now that the long-dead foal and the party AI had a real topic to discuss, trivial things as, such as the utter destruction of a pony settlement and unleashing a weapon of mass destruction rightfully slipped away from their attention. First lesson, the danger of cooties. Day 12. Time, approximately 12.30 p.m. Location, Broccoli, Big 52, South Branch. Two of the guards on the walls were looking down at the foal as she talked and giggled to herself, while their fellow sentries kept watch for any sign of other suspicious movement from the south. One of them snatched his head and muttered, We should at least tell her to go away. The second guard sighed, hitting his friend on the head. Yeah, sure. Are you gonna tell her that? After we've seen what happened to the rangers at Ivory Tower? No thanks. You heard the radio. She's dangerous. Let's wait till she gives up and moves away. But, uh, what if she doesn't give away? Or give up and go away? Then what? I don't think some pony should go down there and shoo her. Yeah, sure, great idea. And who's gonna tell her that, huh? You? The older guard emphasized the concept by knocking his colleague on the head again. Hey, stop hitting me. Why don't we send the mayor? Who elected her for this kind of thing, after all? The veteran stopped his hoof a moment before hitting the guard a third time. Instead, he tapped his chin. You know, that's not a bad idea at all. Day 12. Time, approximately 12.45 p.m. Location, Broccoli, Big 52, SC Branch. Half an hour of explanations later, 
P7 knew everything she needed to know about love. At least from Puppy's point of view. Alright, so kisses are ew, but they are cool if they have explosions in the background or fitting music. Yep. Puppy nodded with the expression of a pony who knows a lot of things. Still, I'm not sure I understand the part about making foals. Eh, it's quite a difficult part. I am almost sure that there are a mom and a dad involved. Mom told me that you had to love dad super much, and that it involved a letter to Princess Celestia. But the teacher at the kindergarten told me a story with cabbages and Princess Luna. My old friend, uh, Greensleeves, told me it involved a lot of rumbling, and it was super gross, and that when she caught her mom and dad on the couch, they got super angry, and her mom scolded her dad because he didn't lock the door. And the day after she explained to Greensleeves that they were giving her a little sister... Puppy paused for a moment, trying to remember something else. I think that sending a letter's better. It also explains why I can't have a foal of mine, since I can't write. Alright, and what about poetry? Oh, that's easy. To fall in love, you look out the window, and then your real love will come out of a bush and sing you a song. Or tell you some mighty beautiful poem, and you'll love him and all. That doesn't make much sense, objected the computer. Love doesn't make sense at all. Besides, I've seen it in a show called Cotello and Filiette. It was boring as hay, and boring things are always instructive, so it must be true. Okie dokie, you are the expert here, replied P7, now positively convinced. So, what do I do now? Who is this lover of mine? I'm so excited. Aren't you excited? When am I going to meet him? Well, hold your horses. He must do the first move. It's always the colt that goes after the filly. Not the opposite. Puppy sighed. Really? Were you listening before? I'll call him and tell him that you don't like him at all, and then... Hey! You there! A voice called, but Puppy was far too busy with matters of the heart to pay attention. But I like him! I want to meet him. But you didn't even tell me his name! Protested the AI. Puppy helmet hoofed. Of course I didn't tell you! He's a secret admirer. Do you want to spoil everything? Do you want to lose your true love forever? Ahem. <clears throat> Excuse me? The voice interrupted again, but the fool waved a hoof at it, trying to get it to be quiet. P7's voice panicked. No. No. I don't want to be alone in all my existence. I'll do like you say, puppy. I'm completely in your hooves. Please don't let me down. The filly nodded, satisfied. Very well. Stick to my master plan, and you'll be happy forever after. Hey, stop ignoring me, little filly. A hoof knocked on Puppy's helmet, forcing the fool to divert her attention from Miss Voice's love affairs to the annoying pony in front of her. She was an earth pony mare with a helmet, a light combat saddle, and a lever-action rifle standing directly in front of Puppy with an annoyed expression. I'm the sheriff and mayor of Broccoli. You can't stay here. Please go away. Puppy sighed. Excuse me, Miss Voice. It seems there are some ponies that can't wait their turn. I'll call you later. The filly moved her attention towards the mare, and her annoyed expression quickly changed to a broad, friendly smile when she realized that the pony came from inside the wall. Hi, I'm Puppy Smiles. Have you seen my mom? I tried knocking at the door, but no pony opened it for me, and all those funny faces up on the wall must be completely deaf. The mare sighed and waved a hoof. Wait. Stop talking and listen. You can't come inside the town. There are raiders all around the place, and you are not welcome here. I'm here to tell you to go away. We don't want you. Puppy kept smiling as she replied. Silly pony, I can't go away. Mr. Voice says that Mom's inside this place. I have to find her so that everything will be all right. The little pony giggled. What the? Are you stupid or what? You arrived from Ivory Tower, and that place was completely destroyed just the other day. We are a superstitious herd, but it seems quite obvious that you don't bring good luck with you. So just leave with that. You can't get in. Now go away, or we will shoot you down. But I need to find my mom. Puppy, please? Puppy tried her best begging eyes, making the pony step back for a moment. A no is a no. Now go away, or we will kill you. This is my last warning. 
Little Philly sat on the ground, looking at the mare while pouting. But, 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 my mom, please, please. The foal began sobbing. No, please don't cry. Aren't you supposed to be some sort of immortal hero? The mare had been prepared to send away a big badass wasteland dweller, but a crying foal was not on her list. This little pony had no dignity at all. The mare looked up at the walls, begging for some help from the mercenaries. All she got back were just shrugs. Damn, this Philly saved their families. They won't shoot for sure. Okay, okay. You win. Just don't cry, all right. Stop crying! Come inside and I'll accompany you through the town so that you can look for your mother. The fool sniffed a little, muttering her reply. You don't want to find my mom for real. You just want me to go away. Why don't you want to be my friend, Miss Pretty Pony? The mare snorted. Don't make me change my mind. We will get you inside, but you have to follow some rules. No weapons, no stealing, no annoying the gods, and the most important one, stop whining! Puppy smiled and shrot towards the mare. Okie dokie. I like you, Miss Pretty Pony. What's your name? The guard sighed and looked away. Boiled broccoli. Now behave and follow me. Ew! I don't like broccoli. How can a pony have a broccoli cutie mark? It's terrible! Protested Puppy. Broccoli is all we have here. You better learn to like broccoli because you won't be getting anything else for lunch, dinner, breakfast, or a snack. Oh, and they aren't for free. Day 12. Time, approximately 1.30 p.m. Location, Broccoli. Big 52, South Branch. The mayor of Broccoli stepped inside the town hall while talking with Puppy. All right, kids. Here we are, Rainy Days Hall. I'm not sure that it has something to do with your mother. Mother Town Hall has been here since the days of the war. Its name comes from all the writings on the wall. Take your time. The mayor took a look at Puppy to see if the foal was listening, but her charge was instead engaged in conversation with her own helmet. Boiled Broccoli just shook her head. So I told her that you're a super shy and she seemed pretty interested. So now you just have to write her a love poem. You called me because you want me to declare my love for another artificial intelligence. I have a lot of things to do, like keeping together a band of brainless cutthroats, and you called me for such idiocracy. Please tell me, did I do something wrong? Puppy stopped for a moment, pondering Solus's question before nodding. Yeah, totally. But we can fix that. And she doesn't really need to know that you were a bug and a stinker. Now, about that love poem. I don't want to write love poems. Stop calling me! Ah, you're so sweet. Okie dokie, I'll help you with this one. Tell me, what do you like about Miss Voice? Ah, she has a surprisingly powerful firewall and her routines seem to work better while she's multitasking. I also found out that her antivirus suite is well-programmed and up-to-date with- Wait! Why am I playing your game? I'm out of here and stop calling me! With those last words, Solus closed the connection, leaving Puppy alone with Broccoli's town hall. The mayor sighed, looking at the foal. So, are you done? Want a cup of tea? The sarcasm was evident in her voice. But using sarcasm against Puppy was like honking a horn to make a deaf pony move. Ah, uh, no thanks, I can't take off the helmet. The filly stepped into the large room filled with lots of chairs and a large desk. On the entrance's left, there was a line of windows looking outside, but all the other walls were covered in graffiti. Puppy couldn't remember being in this place before, so she hadn't the slightest idea of where to look. Ah, uh, can I have some help, please? Little Broccoli sighed. What now? Can't even read. The mirror pointed at the walls. It's all there. The foal looked away, a little embarrassed. Ah, uh, it's not that I can't read, but, well, I have problems with some letters, and I'm not very good with long words. Listen, I've read all this stuff like a hundred times. It says that one day a mare named Rainy Days arrived here from a military base in the north. 
They founded the place. There were troubles, and ponies were dying. So she wrote some important rules on the walls. The pony pointed at the long list of written words, placed just behind the big desk. See? They're still there. Anyhow... She had been the first mayor of this place, as you can see on the mayor's list there. But after she was here, five years, other rainy days, it's a pretty common name around these parts. Puppy Smile tilted her head, trying to understand what the mayor was telling her. But everything she got from her fast synopsis can be summarized like this. What? Foiled side. Why me? Listen, we're in a bit of a situation of danger here. A big band of raiders is assaulting the city south of here, and they could be hitting us very soon. I have no time to help you find a 200-year-old man. Please go away and let us be. There's nothing for you in this place. Honest. Puppy frowned. She didn't understand everything, but it seemed that her mom had been here and was now gone again. If only this pretty pony could tell her where mom went this time, it would have been awesome. But it seemed that she didn't want to help Puppy. Ah, uh, if you, uh, give me, if you help me, I'll, I'll give you this. Puppy looked inside of her bags, searching for something pretty to barter. It's a barter, and it's okay, because every pony does that. The filly found Fuzzy Ball, but she didn't want to give away her pet. No, it was better to keep Fuzzy hidden before some pony noticed her. There were many other things she could offer, like some empty bottles of Sparkle Cola, uh, bag of pretty caps, a brushable Lyra. Wait, what? The fool gave a better look to the doll to be really sure, but it was impossible not to recognize the gorgeous coat and wonderful flowing mane. Ah, he gave me the pretty green pony. Look. Puppy showed the plastic green unicorn to boiled broccoli. What now? The mayor raised an eyebrow, confused. Mr. Red Cape, he gave me his doll. She's so cute. I love her. The filly hugged the doll into a burst of happiness. This is the best toy ever. She still has all her mane and it's in place. And her tail, too. The outburst of joy made the guard pony smile for a moment, but she immediately reverted to her scowl. Bulls were annoying. That was all. Yes, so what? Are you trying to make me help you in exchange for a doll? Puppy froze on the spot, her joy disappearing in sudden realization. You... You want her? But, but... The fool looked at the mare, then to the doll, and then at the mare again, hesitating. This toy was really beautiful, and it was new, but Miss Broccoli wanted it in order to help Puppy finding Mom. Sacrifices. Always sacrifices. Why this stupid place was taking her from her every single nice thing she had. Not fair. Not fair at all. But there were rules, and Mom was somewhere out there. Ah. Uh. If you help me find Mom. Puppy hesitated before nodding, resigned. Okay, I'm giving you the cute doll, but please, will you help me? This was a hard blow. The doll was a present, but Mom... No, Puppy, don't think about it. When you find Mom, all of this will go away. Just one more town. Boiled broccoli cocked her head. What the fuck, is she holding back tears? Does she really believe that I want her doll... What am I doing? Teasing fools and extorting toys? When did I become like this? The mayor looked away, lowering her voice. I... I might help you. I think there is some sort of computer with a logbook. We can search together in the first entry to see if there's something regarding rainy days. Come with me. The little pony inside the guard felt very, very ashamed for herself. Day 12. Time, approximately 2.15 p.m. Location, Broccoli, Big 52, SC Branch. Could you please speak a little louder? I'm trying to find some clues about your mother while you play Karandi de Puppy Smiles. Boiled Broccoli groaned, trying to ignore Puppy chatting on the radio and put her hooves over her ears. Yeah! He says he's super in love. He likes your, ah, uh, stuff. And some other stuff of yours. And he said something about a wall that burned. I don't understand everything, but he seemed so hot. P7's voice was dancing the pony pokey out of joy. Yay, 
He likes me. I'm so happy I can't believe I don't even know what you're talking about. You know, after that hacking attempt the other day, I was quite depressed. It seemed like anything out there that existed with the sole purpose of bullying me. But now I have a secret lover and my life is pink. Yep, I know I'm the best. No need to thank me. Now your next move is waiting till he confesses himself. Then you refuse him. There was a long pause. What? I don't think I heard you right. This is funny. It seemed to me that you told me to refuse him. Puppy nodded, wisely. Yeah! You must always refuse him the first time, so he feels bad and loves you even more. Follow the rules! Oh, right, the rules. Okie dokie, let's do this by the book. I'll leave everything to your master plan, then. Puppy smiled. Don't worry, you won't regret this. Now I really have to go because Miss Broccoli's trying to find my mom. I'll call you later and tell you what to do. Okie dokie. Okie dokie loki. Later. The communication was interrupted while Puppy turned her attention towards the pony at the terminal. Ah, did you find anything, Miss Pretty Pony? You mean while you were giving sage advice about love to your friends? Yes, I found something. The mare turned the computer screen towards Puppy Smiles. Is this your mother? The filly smiled happily. Yeah, Mom! Isn't she beautiful? My mom's the best mom ever. It was a photo, with the mare wearing military technician suit and a helmet. The earth pony was slim and not very tall. Puppy shared a line of her muzzle and eyes. All right. It says here she moved south to Emerald Shores. Doesn't say why, but it was almost two centuries ago. I don't think that... Where's Emerald Shores? Puppy asked promptly. South, past the ironworks. You can't miss it, because there's only one ocean past Emerald Shores. Puppy's ears moved a little. You said, that place is the last one along the stupid road? Yes, it's the last city along the Big 52, but you couldn't call it a... Yay, I found Mom. There's no place left to go. Mom's in Emerald Shores. The filly jumped all around the room, faster than a filly on a sugar bomb and Spock cola trip. Well, actually, if you follow the coast, there's the NCA, and you don't give a fuck, do you? You aren't even listening anymore. The filly was already out in the road and was running towards the walls. Oil Broccoli sighed. Ah, <sighs> well, at least I got rid of her. Trotting outside the town hall, the mayor was surprised to find Puppy waiting for her, especially after having seen her zooming away. What now? Why aren't you chasing your mom? The fool took the green unicorn doll from her bag and offered it to Boiled. Ah, uh, please love her and brush her. Her name's Lyra, and she's really, really awesome friend. The guard refused the doll, sighing. Keep that thing. I'm not stealing toys from foals. Just get out of my town as soon as possible and don't come back. We already have a lot of troubles on our own. Puppy hesitated for a moment. But if you want, I can take the doll anyway. The last line gave the filly the motivation she needed to move. The fool hid the brushable toy in her bag and zoomed away, leaving alone a snickering boiled broccoli. Okay, thank you, bye! Goodbye, whiny ghost. The mare sighed one last time, then raised her voice, yelling at the ponies on the wall. Let the fool go out and close the doors again. Organize another night with double shifts. Make sure everything, every farm has kept lights on. And keep your eyes open. The winds of war were blowing in the air, and that yellow pony was running straight into the storm. Oh well, not Boyle's problem at all. Day 12. Time, approximately. 5 p.m. Location, Boarockley Fields. Big 52, South Branch. What do you want again? Solus's exasperation was palpable in his voice, but Puppy didn't care. Hi, Mr. Blue. I have talked with Pink, and she's very, very interested in meeting you. She says she feels so lonely and wants new friends. What the... Wait. You convinced that artificial intelligence in Solaris Tunnel 2 to let me access its storage. Are you serious? 
I was zooming through the last field south of Broccoli, Puppy frowned. I'm always serious. Yes, she's waiting for you to sing her a serenade. So make a super romantic song and go to her. If you fall in love, and you'll be happy happy ever again. There was a long pause before Solar spoke again. And when he did so, he was confused. Uh, thank you. I was convinced that this P7 of yours was a friend. Can I ask why you're backstabbing her like this? It doesn't seem rational. Not that I expect anything rational from you anyway. Back what? Listen, it's easy. You're a voice, she's a voice, both of you are very, very lonely. I'm mighty sure that you'll meet and be super duper friends. And since I'm a friend with both of you, I want you to be friends with each other. That's all. Another long pause rolled away with the road before Solus responded. Friends, you say. We'll see. I could use a strategic ally, after all. When the communication was cut, the radio replaced Mr. Blue's voice. Tonight, I can't say it's a good night, my little ponies. Not earlier than half an hour ago, Ironworks launched a cry for help. The ponies in the fortified town are under siege. Apparently, attacking by a horde of well-armed and organized raiders. If this is the wild herd, we've never seen them like this before. They have heavy weapons, combat robots, and fight like an organized group. We have no idea of what's going on behind the scenes, Big 52. But if we don't react now, it could be too late. And to show that Lonesome Pony is not all talk and no meat, I'm flying to the front with my old rifle on my shoulders. DJ Goodstuff will take care of the radio in my absence. Be kind with her and help her like you did with me. From LP, that is all. Have a last song. Footnote. Level up. 14. New perk added. Boisterous incompetence. Yeah, don't worry, I know exactly what I'm... Boom. During dialogues or skill tests, if your skill is less than half that requires score for succeeding the feat, you get special dialogue options that have a 50% chance of success. Beware, if you fail this test, the results will be way worse than usual failure. <laughs>